From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. It's been a while, but old man winter is headed this way and seems like he's ready to make Montana pay. Pretty quiet right now on the Stockman Bank weather cam, but between heavy snow, freezing temperatures and treacherous travel conditions, the shovels and the plows will be out this weekend. Mass weather and storm warnings all across the state. Let's get right to Chris DeRose standing by in the weather center with the up to date details. Chris. Yeah, a lot going on. We have a winter storm warning officially in our area that actually starts tonight around 3 a.m. Uh, but in already parts of our region, there is snow falling. So just be aware of that. And it's not going to all come at once. It's basically going to spread out over the next couple of days, but we could be seeing uh, a lot of snow. You guys here is uh, also what we've got going on tonight. Wind chill advisory current wind chills up in northeastern Montana are going to drop down to 20 to 40 below zero. That is very, very cold. So if you're in that region, please, please, please bundle up uh, before going outside tonight. Here's a, a forecasted map. Look at the snow as it comes down from Canada and then basically Friday it's hanging out. It tapers off a little bit and then comes back with a vengeance Saturday and Sunday. So just be aware of that. Here's our GFS model. Uh, basically everybody is looking at some form of snow accumulation in Billings. We could be seeing 10 to 14 inches, Livingston 14 to 20, Sheridan 6 to 10, uh, and plus the freezing cold temperatures, which we'll get to in the full forecast. So stay warm and stand by. And I'll tell you more about it. All right. Thank you, Chris. And with all the snow headed this way, crews with the city of Billings hustling to get their plows and equipment ready. And we spoke with the street and traffic superintendent who says his team is ready for the snowfall. The sand and salt mixture used to keep the streets clear is full and drivers will head out tonight to start prepping those roads. So, so what we've done is gone through all the trucks. We've um, put the sanders in the trucks, operated them, made sure everything was operating properly. All the lights were functioning. Um, went through all of our salted sand is stored at maximum capacity. Our slicer fully loaded on that de-icer. All of our storage containers are maxed out on that. So got all the trucks ready. We're just waiting for the snow now. Crews plan to start hitting the roads around 11 o'clock tonight. The plan is to prep those surfaces before any heavy snow begins to fall. Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene will be removed from the Budget and Education and Labor Committees after 11 Republicans joined the Democrats in a bipartisan House vote. Earlier, the Georgia representative expressed regret over some of her controversial comments, calling them, quote, words of the past. Natalie Brand is at the White House with more. The yeas are 230 and the nays are 199. The Democratic-controlled House has voted to strip Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene from her committee assignments. We are dealing with conduct that brings shame on this House, an appointed refusal to denounce or internally police it by Republicans. Everyone has said things they wish they didn't say. Everyone has done things they wish they didn't do. So who's next? Green has questioned whether school shootings, including Parkland and Sandy Hook, were staged, claimed there's no evidence a plane hit the Pentagon on 9-11, and reportedly liked social media posts calling for violence against some Democrats. These were words of the past. In a House floor speech Thursday, Representative Green walked back those comments, saying she now believes school shootings and the 9-11 attacks were real. I was allowed to believe things that weren't true, and I would ask questions, questions about them and talk about them, and that is absolutely what I regret. Representative Green came to this floor to defend her indefensible conduct. I heard no apology. The controversy over the freshman Georgia congresswoman comes as the rift within the Republican Party has widened since former President Trump left the White House. We're not going to be divided and that we're not going to be in a situation where people can pick off uh, any member of leadership. Wednesday night, House Republicans voted 145 to 61 in a secret ballot to keep Congresswoman Liz Cheney in her leadership position, despite some calls for her removal in response to her vote to impeach President Trump. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Montana's representative Matt Rosendale and Wyoming's Liz Cheney both voting against the resolution to remove Green. Rosendale saying in a statement, for the first time in the history of the House of Representatives, the majority party is assuming the power to remove a member from a committee for statements they made before they assumed office. I can't allow them to set this precedent for elected representatives, and I voted against this resolu uh, resolution for this reason. Let's get back to policy, not personalities. 
Well, Republicans in the Montana House endorsed a bill today that would eliminate voter registration on Election Day. The House voted 61 to 39 to advance House Bill 176, which would end voter registration at noon on the Monday before Election Day. Since 2006, Montanans have been able to register and vote right up to the close of polls on Election Day. Conservatives in the House tried today and failed to move the registration deadline in the bill to the Friday before Election Day. They say they'll try that amendment again in the Senate. All 61 votes for the bill were Republicans who say it's a party position to end Election Day registration. GOP State Representative Jedediah Hinkle of Belgrade says nonprofit groups are busing people to the polls on Election Day, leading to long lines for registration. But Democrat Tom France of Missoula says there's nothing wrong with that and that the bill is an attempt to su suppress the vote. Those nonprofit groups, and they were not on our side of the aisle. What they were doing was when they were, you know, 30 feet from the building, they were working all of those people with literature, pizza, heat lamps, and everything else. I know we had candidates. I might have been one myself that on the Sunday before election and on the Monday before election were campaigning. And I would have hoped that I might have said something that inspired someone who wasn't eligible to vote, to think I better darn well get bound to the voting place and, and cast my vote and I better register to do it. That bill faces a final vote this week in the House before advancing to the state Senate. An update tonight on that armed standoff that lasted for nearly 33 hours and closed schools in Livingston. It's finally over now. The Park County Sheriff's Office says 49-year-old Michael Marfuda surrendered around 10 o'clock last night, but it didn't end without a fight. The Park County Sheriff says tactical teams were trying to reposition vehicles around the house when Marfuda opened a door, started firing on officers again, he gave up after police fired back, leaving him with non-life-threatening injuries. That standoff had started Tuesday afternoon after deputies attempted to serve an eviction notice. Marfuda is being charged with an outstanding warrant of assault with a weapon and obstructing a peace officer, plus additional charges are pending, including attempted homicide and criminal endangerment. A long-standing Billings real estate company has changed ownership after 61 years. Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Floberg Real Estate, which for many years was known as Prudential Floberg, has been sold. Dan and Beth Smith became the owners on January 1, 2021, and the announcement was made Wednesday. The firm's founder, Don Floberg, signed the final paperwork a day before he died back in December. Marilyn Floberg... Tom and Robin Hannell, Linda Parker, and Mike Oliver owned that business until the end of the year. The Smiths have been working as sales associates for Floberg Real Estate. We knew the reputation, uh, the ethics that we saw as agents here, and we, we immediately knew that that was a business that we wanted to be involved in. And uh, the longer we were here, the more we realized that we wanted to actually be owners. As you know, real estate is a changing industry and leadership is very, very important. And the uh, technology, the innovative thinking and what have you that the Smiths bring with them and with the company will be very essential to success. The company also has offices in Columbus and Red Lodge. Tom Hannell will stay on as managing broker and also work with Robin in sales. Well, happy birthday wishes going out today to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Yellowstone County, celebrating its 50th anniversary of serving kids here in Billings. When it first opened in 1971, it was called the Boys Club and was located in the basement of the old Billings Library, now the Western Heritage Center. From there, the Boys Club moved to the Yellowstone Paper Company building where the club's membership quickly grew to around 300. As you can see, the activities included archery lessons and playing shuffleboard, but it was rough sledding for the club during those early years. I mean, nobody had heard of this thing. Nobody knew anything about boys clubs. There was no history. There was nothing to lean on, no foundation. And what they struggled to start with, but what was fascinating is, you know, it was des they were desperate to do stuff because they knew kids needed more to do. Boys back then, they had hope that it would get figured out and gratitude that the community stepped forward. In 1983, girls were invited to join the club, a controversial decision at the time. Today, club kids celebrated with a, that huge milestone with birthday cake, balloons, and games. 50 years ago, the boys club served around 70 kids all in one location. 
Well, today the organization has five clubhouses and five microsite locations. Well, Super Bowl excitement is building and now Intralot, the sports betting service contracted by the Montana Lottery and Simple Bet are unveiling a new way to wager on the big game. Intralot and Simple Bet are partnering to offer micro market betting, which means bettors using Sports Bet Montana will be able to place bets on a play by play basis. The simple bet technology was first implemented in Washington, D.C. Montana will be only the second market to see the combination of the two betting services. And remember, you can watch Tom Brady and the Buccaneers take on Patrick Mahomes and the defending Super Bowl champion Chiefs, Super Bowl 55, this Sunday right here on Q2. Coverage begins at 9.30 Sunday morning. Kickoff set for 4.30 in the afternoon. Well, this year, the Montana Women's Run celebrates 40 years of getting women and girls active and giving back to our community. And this year's color choice is royal blue. This is a look at this year's T-shirt as we announce registration is now open for Women's Run 2021. In keeping with the Women's Run tradition, this year's art created by a local artist has a meaning behind it. The circular placement of the type and shoelace embodies movement and communicates unity while symbolizing the wholeness of health and well-being for women. And due to COVID-19, this year's race set for Saturday, May 18th, the day before Mother's Day, will be a little different. Instead of filling the streets of downtown, you can grab your mom, family members, and friends, hit the trails and sidewalks to show your support. All the proceeds go back to local women's efforts across our community. And registration is now open for the 40th annual run. You can go to this story on KTVQ.com. Find a link to get you and the women in your life all signed up. Well, still ahead on tonight's MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2, lead, arsenic, mercury, not exactly the substances you want in baby foods, but a disturbing new report shows that may be the case. Those details in tonight's Health Watch. Then a little later in sports, Running with the Red Devils will introduce you to an inside-out combo looking to take Huntley Project to new heights this season. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Tonight, a disturbing new government report says baby food from some of America's largest manufacturers is tainted with toxins that can cause permanent brain damage. The findings come from the company's internal documents. CBS News consumer investigative correspondent Anna Werner has details in tonight's Health Watch. The report says many baby foods have dangerous levels of toxic heavy metals, including arsenic, lead, cadmium, and mercury. Chloe, you want more? Something Connecticut mom like Carrie Kerner never thought her one-year-old daughter Chloe might be eating. That's the least thing a mother wants to think about. That, that's very concerning as a new mom. Investigators said internal documents from four U.S. baby food manufacturers showed toxic metals in baby foods at levels higher than other products. When compared to government limits for bottled water, the results were up to 91 times the arsenic level, up to 177 times the lead level, and up to 69 times the cadmium level. Wow. UCSF professor Tracy Woodruff. A baby who's eating this food can be exposed to multiples of these contaminants. The majority of companies told us they're committed to safety, follow government rules and their own internal standards, and are working on voluntary proposals to limit metals. Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy says voluntary efforts aren't enough. We need the FDA to step into the breach and do what I think the American people believe it is, is its job to do, which is to make sure that the food that their babies consume is safe. The FDA says it's working on it, but acknowledges there's more work to be done. Anna Werner, CBS News, Berkeley, California. All right, up next in weather, after what seemed like a mild winter, we're about to have a big, big change headed our way. Chris will fill you in on all the details coming up after the break. Storm Tracker weather starts now with meteorologist Ed McIntosh. Hey, good evening, everybody. Ed's got the night off, so I'm holding down the fort. I wanted to start us off with this beautiful photo. This is from our buddy Rick over in Red Lodge. This was taken yesterday. Yesterday was a powder day in Red Lodge. They got six inches of snow, and uh, this is one of the runs on Red Lodge Mountain. So it's a, a harbinger of things to come. Snow is on its way, folks. A beautiful shot of downtown Billings before that snow from our Stockman Bank weather camera. Let's check the currents right now. 33 degrees in Billings. 
Texas feels like 21. We got winds coming out of the west about 21 miles per hour, gusting just above 30.